For centuries, adventurers have sailed to the Great Red Island in search of its many treasures. And one of these is a fascinating stone, the tourmaline, reputed here for its protective and healing powers. In a small, isolated village in the highlands of Madagascar, this precious mineral continues to be mined. The name of the village is Sarafara. When I went to Madagascar in late 1965, I had a book with me called The Mineralogy of Madagascar, which made mention of a beryl deposit, with another stone occurring near it, the tourmaline. After reading about this extraordinary stone, we set off in our Land Rover along the Highland Road and headed for a small village called Ambulanambul. After a few days' drive, we arrived at the foot of a hill. It was nightfall, the sky was pitch black. It looked like a storm was coming. We quickly set up our tents. During the night, the storm broke out. The heavy rain washed away the earth, and the next day we found lots of tourmalines on the ground. It's a miracle, I thought, because how often does one make a discovery like that? It was like El Dorado. The tourmaline is unique amongst gemstones in that it occurs in every color of the rainbow, including mixed colors. The red variety is called rubellite. These stones have been in my family for a long time. I'd like to set them into a piece of jewelry. What do you think? They're of excellent quality. They've already been cut and polished. Some parts have been ground. A magnificent Madagascar polychrome. Those are the best ones. Madagascar is a large island, crossed in the south by the Tropic of Capricorn. Its population of 15 million is made up of 18 ethnic groups called Karazabe, three quarters of whom live outside the towns. The crystalline rock belt, which covers two thirds of the country, provides a unique variety of gems, the mining of which remains for the most part small scale. Set in the Indian Ocean, the island is separated from the African mainland in the west by the Mozambique Channel. A thousand years ago, Madagascar was covered with a dense virgin forest, a large part of which has now been cleared. The local medicine men still come here to pick their medicinal herbs and roots. These traditional remedies are sold at the local markets, alongside the fruit and vegetables. Because of its isolated position, Madagascar has a large number of endemic animal species, which, like its vegetation, are extremely varied. The lemur is an example. A local legend tells the story of a couple from the Zafindianambo tribe who, after being transformed into Babakoto, ran off screeching into the forest. This could explain why these small primates are rarely hunted or eaten. Crocodiles are considered to be the reincarnation of ancestors. The old people tell the story of a thirsty man who asks for water in a village. The only person to offer him some is an old woman. The man is in fact a sorcerer. And after the departure of the old woman, he transforms the village into a lake and its inhabitants into crocodiles. Madagascar is renowned for the rich resources of its subsoil, including precious stones. In a desert zone, where gem-rich alluvial deposits have accumulated over millions of years, a town named Ilekaka sprang up. Prospectors and criminals swarmed here in the hope of getting rich quick. But very few met with success. Here, sapphires, zircons, garnets, as well as tourmalines, deposited here by former rivers, are bought and sold by the kilo each day. The settling of scores between rival ethnic groups is a common occurrence and often ends up in killings and lootings. 
A group of huts, placed vaguely under army protection, is reserved for the stone trading. The buyers, who are often foreigners, rent trading space here. Certain negotiations take place directly in the street. The sellers sometimes offer fake sapphires. Through lack of experience, they've bought these fake stones from foreigners and now have to resell them in order to get their money back. <laughs> 70 million each. It's got a flaw, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big one. How much does it weigh? Six grams. What's your price? I'll let you have it for 70. We're interested. 70 million? Yes, 70 million. What are these people doing? They're businessmen. Which means? They sell and buy back stones. Really? Yes. For example, I can sell you back a stone that you sold me yesterday. A stone can be bought and sold between us maybe four or five times. It depends on who finds the best customer for it. If you don't manage to sell the stone, then you've lost. I might find a customer for it, so I buy the stone back from you again. That's the way business is done here. We call this place the Far West, or the Texas of Madagascar, because there's a lot of criminal activity here. People kill each other for the stones, for the money they bring. So it's starting to get difficult now. And there's a lot of vandalism, too. All kinds of stones are sold here. Barrels, crystals, sapphires. A lot of emeralds used to be sold here too, I think. Around 80 or 90 kilos worth, something like that. Of course, tourmalines, there are a lot of those. Big, big, yeah. Yes, it's a polychrome. How much? 400,000. No, that's too much for me. Make me an offer then. I'll give you 50 for it. No, no, I can't let it go for that. <laughs> well, I can't pay what you're asking. 350 then. No, that's my final offer. No deal then. I can't accept that. Okay. Business isn't so good here now. It's not like it used to be. It's hard work trying to sell a stone. Before, there used to be only three houses here. And now there are around 100,000 people because of the sapphires. They come here to make their fortune. Some are lucky, some aren't. Ah, so you're here too. How are you? Hello. So what's with you? How's business? Not too bad. There's no money left because we spent it on stock. We sold the few stones we had left in Tulear. We've no more money now. How did you lose your money? It was because of the civil war. We got away just in time, but we had to leave a lot of our stock behind. I'm glad to see you. I don't know anybody here. I feel a bit lost. I don't know what to do now. 
Oui, tu es un artiste, tu es un How much money did the stones bring you? $200,000. Just about the price of our return fare home. That's all. That's why I'm still here. What are you going to do now? We're thinking of going to Ibiti or Sarafara to mine the tourmaline. There's nothing doing here. I've given up hope. We had a bit of money, but we bought some stock with it, and then things got disorganized. My friend went to Tuliar, and I'm trying to find a bush taxi to go and join him there. A three-hour drive away from Ilakaka is the seaside resort of Tuliar. It's an ideal place for selling stones at a good price to tourists who don't know anything about them. So, how are you? How are things going? Fine. How did you make out? Did you sell them? Yes, I sold them at Ifati over there. Do you have the money to go home? Yes, I have enough money to get us both home. Twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five thousand. Well, let's go and find a bush taxi then. It'll take the bush taxi two days to reach the region of Ansirabi, and another day to reach the village of Sarafara. This village is completely isolated from the modern world. There's no access to it by car. The nearest road is two hours away on foot. There's no electricity or running water. Gabi has lived here all his life, and his main activity outside his traditional family life is working the tourmaline mines that his father worked before him. Make yourselves at home. So, how was your trip? Are you satisfied with the results? Here, the tourmaline is doing very well at the moment. It didn't go as well as we hoped. Well, I couldn't stop you from going. You wanted to make a quick fortune somewhere else, whereas here at home the tourmaline mines are starting to give good results. As the saying goes, come home with your head held high even though you failed. Now you should concentrate on mining the tourmaline here. This is Mr. Patrick, a Vaza, a foreigner, who was with us at Ilakaka. He came back with us here because he's interested in the tourmaline mining. Thank you, that's very kind of you. Thank you, Vaza. <laughs> The story goes that a stranger came by here and found the village to be very isolated, so he said, these people are very brave to live here. And that's how our river got its name, Sahitani, which means don't fear the unknown land. Mr. Patrick, I'm 40 years old. No, 60. And I've been mining the tourmaline for 40 years now. I have nine children. My four boys work, so they help me. This is my father's village. He mined the tourmaline until he was 59. 
Here are the tourmalines that we've extracted this week in the Sarafara quarry. Tourmaline's name comes from the Sinhalese word tourmali, which translates literally as little thing out of the earth. When gently heated or rubbed, the crystal generates a static electrical charge that attracts ash and dust particles. This property is called pyroelectricity. In the village, a bullfight is organized to celebrate the return of the young men. It is also an occasion for the young women to witness the bravery of their future husbands. Gabi celebrates the ceremony with local rum, considered here as holy water. The men are anxious to see the fruit of their labor, and if I don't watch them, they're going to do things too quickly. Whereas the mine wall has to be reinforced, and the tunnel dug in order to find the path leading to the stones. We have a good chance of finding something. The jumper is a bit blunt. Where are the matches? Here are the matches. I'm going to light the way for you. The matches won't be enough. We need torches and candles. Here's a candle. Where's the rum? Can you get past? Tourmalines were formed over 500 million years ago, occurring in a rock belt that spread across the original continent of Gondwana, then Brazil, Africa, Madagascar, and Sri Lanka. The continental drift separated and transported the tourmaline deposits, which originally formed a single block. This explains the common range of color found in the tourmalines from these countries. You have to follow the seam and not dig just anywhere. Otherwise, the roof will cave in. You have to be very careful when digging the tunnel and make sure that the walls are solidly propped up. This is how we mine the tourmaline. When the black tourmalines, or seam, start to appear, that means that we're close to the pocket. The appearance of these black or transparent tourmalines, rubellite or mica, guarantees the presence of a pocket of polychrome tourmaline. When the seam is good, the results will be good. I'm going home now. I'm tired and hungry. My wife and children will have prepared the meal. Uh, I'm lucky today. There's one, a real one. 
It's beautiful. I was starting to get tired. I was hungry and wanted to go home. But God has rewarded me today, and now, now I can go home. You see, I've been successful. That's how it is with the tourmaline here. With a bit of luck, you can always succeed. Once you've discovered one, others follow, much bigger ones, sometimes as big as this jumper here. <laughs> the tourmaline has a complex chemical composition. It contains silicate, oxygen, as well as various other elements such as sodium, lithium, calcium, boron, etc., which inspired John Ruskin to say, its chemistry resembles more a medieval doctor's prescription than that of a respectable mineral. Don't be afraid. I'm taking you with me to consult Ra Cyril, the astrologer, for our sacrifice tomorrow. Gabi isn't entirely satisfied with his mind's present yield. At Sarafara, the only rational solution to get things moving is to go and consult the astrologer. Here's the village of Dadarabe, the diviner. <laughs> This is Patrick, a foreign friend, a Vaza, who's going to help us with the construction of our mind. I ask you, the elders, to treat him well because he's a good man. This Vaza is our brother. Of course. The purpose of our visit is to consult the stars, through you, in order to find out what is the most propitious day to make our sacrifice. What do you think about tomorrow, Sunday, at what time? We've also come to discuss with you how we can improve the fertility of our mining plot in order for it to produce fine stones such as pink barrel, rubellite, and polychrome tourmalines. I've heard your request, gentlemen, and I say tomorrow at 6 a.m. It's the first day of the fourth month of the Cancer Lunar Year Asorantani, which falls under the astrological sign Leo Alahasati. May God bless you. We are all gathered here to give praise to God for this precious land he has entrusted to us. We pray that you grant us good results in our tourmaline mine. Give us your blessing and answer our prayers. Gabi implores the spirits of the Vazimba, a fair-skinned Aboriginal people believed to be the island's first inhabitants. They are worshipped as gods by the villagers, who offer up sacrifices to them and consult them whenever a problem arises. <laughs> Pray for us that we may find tourmalines. You have our blessing. The dwelling place of the Vazimba is a sacred cave in the mountains where the entire village solemnly makes its way in order to make offerings.
Sit down beside me in front of the sacred home. We're going to pray and ask for God's blessing and help us find precious turmalines. I give you my blessings so that you will obtain good results. It's polychromes we're looking for. We have already searched, but we haven't found any yet. That's why we are here to pray for your help. We're also looking for rubellites and polychrome tourmalines. That's what we ask of you. I bless you and wish you luck. <laughs> the social life of each Malagasy village is organized in accordance with the fadi, which are taboos that only the village elders or sorcerers have the power to lift. Gabi's children may search for tourmalines today, but not tomorrow, as tomorrow is Thursday, and Thursday is fadi. Prospecting and opening new tunnels is done empirically by digging under an area of white clay caused by an anthill or a burrow. It sometimes happens that a pit is dug simply because a crystal has been found in the clay, pushed up to the surface by atmospheric agents. One of you go up there, I'll stay here, and two of you go down. The jumper and the shovel are the two main tools used for extracting this gem. Tourmalines occur in a crumbly, brittle rock. The most interesting specimens are found mainly in kaolin. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> A tourmaline, it's whole. The sacrifice and prayers seem to have paid off. Gabby's sons have now reached the seam and seem pleased with what they see. The stones are appearing. Look at this beauty here. Look, look. Let me see it. It's a polychrome, isn't it? It has 11 colors. Shall we continue or stop for today since we found this one? Let's go and have a beer to celebrate. <laughs> Let's get a good look at it. Hey, men, are you there? Are you all there? 
Yes, we're here. Where were you? You're late. We expected you earlier. How many of you are there? There are four of us. Has the seam appeared? Yes, it's appeared, and we've started extracting. At Sarafara, mining of the tourmaline is not a constant activity. The gem is extracted in accordance with the fadi, but also according to the financial needs of the community. In fact, the money brought in by the stones doesn't serve to feed the village. It is used to buy equipment, to construct buildings, or for other similar needs. Food is generally provided by the crops and livestock. Apart from the stones, we also cultivate rice, manioc, potatoes, and taro. We also raise cattle. One of our ancient Malagasy traditions, Mr. Patrick, is the turning of the dead ceremony. And for this, we kill cattle and pigs. We change the dead person's shroud. It's an ancestral rite. We gather all the family together at one place. We eat, we dance, and have a good time before going to the family tomb. Once there, we send for musicians, flutists, so that the children can dance and watch as we bring the ancestors out of the tomb and change their shrouds. During this ritual, we dance and anoint the ancestors with rum. These are Malagasy customs and must be perpetuated by the descendants. The living communicate with the dead through this ceremony known as the turning of the dead or famadihana. This ritual is practiced in the highlands at the home of the Marina tribe. Gabi has dreamt about his father, who spoke to him at length about the mine, but especially told him that he wasn't comfortable in his tomb. Gabi and his family have therefore organized a famadihana for him. Here we go, grandfather. Come on, lift him, like that. He is Rondriambolo. Rondriambolo, how heavy you are. And here's Grandmother Romaro. And the next one is Ramanana. The purpose of the ceremony is to change the dead person's shroud. This is called the Lamba Men. The dead person is carried around the tomb seven times before being placed inside it again. The old shroud is a symbol of fertility. It will be divided amongst the women. In this region, the inhabitants search for tourmalines everywhere even in the alluvial deposits of the river that provides the village with water. Washed down from the nearby mountains, the dense, gem-rich deposits collect in the natural hollows of the riverbed. 
By digging in precise spots, the gem seekers can find pockets containing a high concentrations of tourmalines. What price are you asking for these stones? 60,000. No, that's too high. No, I can't do it for that price. I arrived here in 1993. We started building the school. There were no doors or windows. But at that time, the quarry was producing a lot of precious stones. And the people who worked there made us a gift of some. We carried out repairs. Every year, the school festivities were held here. And we continued carrying out repairs. Finally, the government gave us sheet metal and cement. We started with mud here. We then managed to have some blackboards. So we're getting there, little by little. These stones come from those mountains over there. They're going to be used to build this school. In the name of God and the ancestors, in accordance with the Malagasy tradition, when building a new house, we bury the living stones, the crystals of light, which are used as protections. It's finished. Come and have a drink. Dada Gabi, you too, Dada Paul. <laughs> Let's drink to a long life for all of us. The tradition has been well respected. Bless you all and may you have success in your endeavors. Long life to all of us. The crystals of light are quartz crystals that the Malagasy place in the four corners of the center of the house's foundations to protect it, with rum drunk in celebration. <laughs> We're going to have these stones valued and then try to sell them at the EBT market because they're of good quality. The gemstones found will be sold. The better crystals will go to collectors or museums, while the purest stones will be bought for cutting. Every Monday, at the foot of the Ibiti mountain, a tourmaline market takes place. It begins early in the morning and stops at midday. As well as stones, food products, clothes and tools are also bought and sold here. It's the main meeting place of the region, where products as well as ideas are exchanged. I come here to buy rough stones. I always do my selling in front of the hotel. I also have a shop, and if a customer comes there, I sell there too. Dealers like Neur come from Ansarabi to buy new stones at the best prices.
15,000 maximum. 20. 15,000 is a good price. <laughs> These are collection pieces. Okay. Add another 2,500. Wow. Don't increase the price, please. I have to resell them. It's my final offer. You'll be doing us a good deed. Noor started gem dealing only two years ago. At the beginning, she sold stones for other dealers in exchange for a commission. Now, she goes to all the stone markets of the region in order to build up her own stock. The profit margins are much higher when one buys directly from the miners, but the risk is greater. One has to have a good knowledge of the stones. It's 10 a.m. Neuer has finished her round. She's bought the stones that interested her here. She now has to go to another market, which is an hour's drive away in a bush taxi. It's the Beta Faux Market. It's a bigger market than the EBT one. On-site artisans forge tools for the miners. This one's not quite right. He's looking for a crystallized tourmaline that isn't chipped or flawed. I don't think that this one has been damaged. He's looking for one with a larger surface. This is the kind of tourmaline we're looking for. Ansirabi is the cradle of the Betsilio ethnic group of Asian origin. <laughs> Newer has her stones cut before selling them. This increases their value. The gem cutters cut around 15 pieces a day. Can you polish this stone and make a plaque? Yes, it shouldn't take long. The polychrome tourmalines are cut perpendicular to the crystal. In this way, slices are obtained, which are then polished. The grindstones have to be changed several times using a finer and finer grain in order to obtain a perfect polish. This work demands a great deal of skill because the tourmaline is a fragile mineral. This is in part due to its inclusions, which are hollow, parallel needles. Due to the successive growth phases of the crystal, the tourmaline displays concentric zones of different colors. Antananarivo is the crossroads where stones from different regions of the country arrive. Here, Newer can find new merchandise and sell her stones. The railroad station 
is the strategic point. Let me see that. Hi, son. Is it rose quartz? It should be cut into two pieces. It's 75,000. 75,000, you say? It starred. Show me where. Here, look. It needs to be cut in two. Twenty-five? Look at the color. I'm looking for cabochon. Perhaps he'll be interested in these. What about rough stones? Is he interested in those? They just need brushing, that's all. It'll bring out the shine. I might be interested. Where else can you find stones like these? I want collection pieces. This one's in its natural state. It hasn't been touched. What I'm really looking for is a collection piece. Unfortunately, this one's slightly chipped. It's nothing. We can rectify that. Don't talk nonsense or I'll get angry. <laughs> it is with the dealers who export that Neuer will have the best chances of selling the totality of her stock of polychrome tourmalines. I have some small stones to sell you if you're interested. Of course. I'll have a look at them and see what you brought me. Are they pretty little stones or big ugly ones? Small ones, but very pretty. These polychromes here, they're from different deposits to those. I found some tourmalines once with a flat termination. They were bluish colored. Blue, pink, green, superb. I think the tourmaline is an extraordinary stone and extremely interesting because it comes in such a wide variety of colors. Just about every color, in fact, from white right through to black. Tourmaline plaques are bought by foreign customers from all over the world, but traditionally it's the Germans who buy the most tourmaline plaques. I have excellent contacts with the German customers. I went to Idar Oberstein and I saw a fantastic collection of polychrome tourmaline plaques, Malagasy for the most part, and mainly old ones, but there were some extraordinary pieces. The dealers of Antananarivo, who export throughout the world, use sophisticated gem processing techniques. Each day, they receive dozens of kilos of minerals, including tourmalines. The selection of rough and cut stones is made with meticulous care. Both the color and the shape of the stone is important depending on the different buyers and the country of export. Certain tourmalines are faceted. It's a stone that displays strong pleochroism, which means that its color changes according to the angle from which the crystal is viewed. A stone can appear dark green from one angle and yellowish green from another one. The gem cutter needs to be extremely skilled in order to be able to select the best cutting angle that will produce the best color. During the cutting, he has to avoid as much as possible the less attractive inclusions while trying to preserve the maximum weight of the stone. It often happens that tourmalines are subjected to artificial heat treatment in order to improve their original hue. The temperatures reached are between 250 and 750 degrees centigrade. But this treatment is rarely used in Madagascar.
I've imported Madagascan tourmalines to Idar Oberstein. And here in the town of Idar Oberstein, for almost 10 years, we've sold ground stones, crushed stones, cut stones for the market here. Quite a lot of people have made a good living for a long time from this marvelous stone, the tourmaline. Magnificent. Do you like it? It's beautiful. I love it. It's really beautiful. It's okay. It's perfect. Gabby's whole life is dedicated to the tourmaline. In a rum-soaked voice, he murmurs, almost chant-like, I've devoted 40 years of my life to it, but it has a great power, that of the Vazimbas. It is responsible for bringing my sons back home to the village.